My next guest has spent most of her life dedicated to getting justice for her son, who is diagnosed seriously mentally retarded at a young age and died at just 22. The answer is how he became mentally, uh, the question is how he became mentally retarded. Vera Duffy has always believed Alan was administered a vaccine that caused all of his problems and she joins me in the studio now. Vera, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, It was, was it 1995 that he actually passed away? It was uh, New Year's Eve 1995. Yeah, the coffin was on the the altar with a Christmas tree flip flashing lights. And the, uh, Never forget it. Horrific. And this still, for you, hasn't gone away. It's still a huge part of your life. Oh, what? well, I can't stop, Tom, now, can I? Where's it, sta- where's it stand now? Just uh, It stands now with this book I've written, which was the only thing I had left. I mean, I'd exhausted all the courts, the European Court of Human Rights. I had uh, been in the coroner's court for 13 years. Uh, with state interference and uh, so finally I said they can't interfere with my freedom of speech so I the book was written with every mum in mind to get their hands on it and that's uh, it, it tore me apart to do it but I did it Right and, and on the legal side of things have you at the moment what, what is it you're trying to get in court what are you trying to get them to declare See, I never wanted anything, Tom, you know, and it's very, people come unstuck when you don't want compensation or you just want them to tell you what happened. Now, either way, if they could come along and say to me, we definitely know Vera didn't do it because this is why, Okay. but I know it did. So, the you know, I'm just sick of the lies and the cover up and I'm not the only one. There's an awful lot of people around this country and around Europe um, who the same thing have happened to. But unfortunately, this is the only country that just says it doesn't happen. And this is an immunisation. It's immunisation, yeah. went wrong. Yeah, and and yeah. since it happened to you so much in the early 70s, um, you've been getting support from people telling you similar tales all over the world. Oh, all over the world, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about all over the world. And uh, immunisation is, is something that's necessary. I mean, it's, it was the better of two evils. We, we can't do without it. But when things go wrong, other countries accept it. And they do something about it and they help these people. But unfortunately, we just throw them on the rubbish heap. Now, you are getting a lot of people all over the world getting in touch to us. Did you mention John Travolta? Is, is uh, involved uh, uh, something, something happened to his child. His child uh, was damaged also. Um, uh, the, the girls are joking with me saying, John Travolta has things going to fly in and looking for you, Vera. Uh, he doesn't know how this woman is standing at this stage because I've been through so much. Now, I have to say... Um, the, the fact that you've been through to so much is actually evident on you. Um, there's photographs of you in this book as a young mother. Uh, with, yeah. And this has been, this has taken over your life and taken a huge toll out of it's, you and it, your family. It is my whole it? life is in the book, Tom. My whole life is in the book. I mean, I can't stop. You know, I would love to say to the, you know, the arrogance of the state and the arrogance of the medical profession, you know, you can't, you can't break a bond between a mother and a child it's like a sacred bond it's like as if they feel they can kick it around like a football and uh, you know okay like he's destroyed cover it up you know don't uh, you know everybody else knows but you're the last person to know yeah, throughout this entire battle with the state, you've, um, particularly um, on, the, on the medical side, you've encountered aggression. Total aggression. It's like um, if I said to you, I'm a doctor, you've got to immunise your child against infectious diseases and your child is total destruction, as Alan was. You're going to choke on those words to say to me, what we recommend to protect your child is destroyed. It. Now, I've plenty of documentation and damning documentation. And um, I've letters of, of one or two doctors came out and spoke about it. But, you know, they get such severe raps across the knuckles. I mean, you, they're just not supposed to do it. And, um, you know, where children have died. And uh, I can't name names, but I mean, I hold shocking information, uh, damning information. When you say that um, other countries have stood up and recognised this, yeah. are, there, are there cases where countries have said it was the immunisation caused the oh, destruction yes. of the child? Oh, yes, absolutely. England paid out 900 million. Ulster paid out something like, I think, 7 or 8 million. Um, Germany has paid out. See... I don't want money, but there's people out there today who I knew years ago and their children are now adults and these people are getting older and they're terrified where that person is going to end up in a mental home where they never were meant to be in the first place with no help whatsoever from this state. This state disgusts me completely. I've nothing but total contempt for it. 
Um, I can understand why when you read this story. Because, oh, it's, it's, it's um, a horrendous story. Yeah. Uh, apart from the story, the photographs are actually very uh, tough yeah, yeah. to look at as well. Because this starts um, the early 70s with an absolutely beautiful little boy. Um, Alan was born completely normally, wasn't he? Completely gorgeous, yeah. I mean, 12 out of 10, he scored about Carmel. Uh, beautiful little fellow, continuously laughed. My mum used to call him the smiler. Uh, I was told by certain people that I said he was a very odd child, which I thought was hilarious. I mean, they will say and do anything. Uh, but, uh, you know, the book, everything is in the book for people to see. To see. I'm just looking, there's photographs of him there on your couch at home. Um, him there with Tracy, yeah. his sister, the fourth smile. He's absolutely gorgeous, sitting up on your lap, that's you there. Um, starting off, young family. Um, yeah, I mean, 70s. everything is happy. We're all, you know, I have Tracy now, I have my little boy and like yeah. life is wonderful. Well, the same as, as many, many, many families across of course, Ireland in yeah. the early 70s, yeah. setting up your home together, yeah. starting off. And then at the time there was an immunisation programme and, you know, there was, everyone was signing up for it. I don't, it was, was it mandatory or? Uh, well, you see, the reason I, I always believed it was never mandatory in this country, mandatory is, is that we, the word we'd use is uh, compulsory. Right. It's because if something goes wrong, well, you told me to do it. You made me do it. But you see, nobody has informed choices here. You know, most no. of the women who go and have these things, and particularly me at that time, I was in total ignorance. I'm, uh, not so much Most total ignorance, but total are. trust. Yeah, I mean, I mean we, we've had our children you're, you're, immunised. We of didn't course. ask hard questions. No, just, everyone certain. else is doing it. There was a bit of a debate at the time with us. For, yeah. Uh, things that were going on, autism, which have simply, since yeah. been discounted. Yeah. But we put our trust in the medical profession. Nothing bad happened. Yeah, well, of course, you look upon it as medicine. So what happened it's with Alan? It's not medicine. What happened with Alan then? Uh, uh, the first one, he was in uh, jerky sort of spasms, grey in the face, eyes rolling. I didn't know what it was. Um, doctors were brought in, they didn't know what it was. Now, I, Tom, I genuinely believe they actually didn't know what it was. Went back for the second one and I tried to dodge it, only because the child was screeching so bad I didn't want to go to be walking around the floor room for another couple of nights. Right. And uh, I was told, well, if he didn't get it, he'd be worse off. I said he was, you know, he was screeching and throwing yeah. up food and he'd be a lot worse off if he doesn't get it. But the big tragedy here was he saw a, a fully fledged paediatrician at seven months and that's where I thought I'd get all my answers. Yeah. And he was had a serious problem then. There was something serious going on then. And he was allowed to have the third one and that was totally criminal. Now, you put your trust in these people. You can't oh, help yeah. it. Uh, Never again. They're, they're saying, oh God, and your gut reaction and, and the evidence of your child is they're hating this. But it's very hard to, to try and stand against them. If the whole, you trust their education, you trust their experience and their, their qualifications. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, they've, they've, <laughs> they've spent a lot of money on educating themselves, haven't they? Thereafter, after the third injection, what happened? He was in massive convulsions then. There was no question it was so bad. Uh, and that happened within hours. And uh, I had never seen a convulsion before. I said, what the hell? That's him there in the convulsion, that picture. You see him in the yellow shirt. Yeah. Now, what age is he there? He's only, that's on the beach. The, and as you say there, there's no enjoyment that day. And with a child like that, ah. Uh, no. Uh, that was all day, every day. That was 24-7 convulsions. But with that type of massive brain damage he had, there was no controlling it. You can control uh, epilepsy, but you won't control how that. How long were the convulsions going on for? Oh, for all his life. All the time? All the time. So from the third immunisation onwards? It never stopped. And still, when you go in and say, look, he's been convulsing since the third injection, people are yeah. saying it, that's unrelated. Uh, they never gave an explanation. They said it was something he picked up in the air or it was obscure origin or it was a virus. That must have driven you crazy. Uh, well, certainly tried to push me over the edge, yeah, very close to it, certainly, yeah. But um, I, when I saw this happening to Alan, I said, there has to be more than Alan, Kevin, at the time. And then everybody, people start writing to me from all over the country and the same story was like the same, repeating myself over and over again. How hard was it there to look after him at that point? Oh, looking after him, Tom, was shocking because there was nothing past his eyes. Um, it was just, you know, constant caring and getting nothing back. But that didn't matter. You know, he was profoundly destroyed. Was it, when you say there was nothing past his eyes, do you feel he didn't even recognise Oh, he didn't recognise me, no. No. No, he knew absolutely nothing. He was with the fairies. There was just nothing there. He couldn't grasp, he couldn't swallow, he couldn't chew, he couldn't sit, he couldn't do any, anything. 
And was there any hope being been No, there was ne- never any hope of Nobody saying back. there's nothing we can do to help. Oh, here. not at all. No. And what was their attitude like? What when, when Um I mean, their attitude uh well I was kinda thrown around from Billy to Jack, you know, kind of thing, you know, will you try and figure it out and you try and talk to her and you this sort of thing. It got to the stage where, you know, you just said you know, you'd 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 nearly want to we we used to say we'd put a tape recorder, we'd hide the tape recorder on us and we'd go into the next one and see what they have to say, you know, this sort of thing. And um it was just we we always knew, but it, it, it just got to the stage where I think when when the paediatrician asked me what was my husband's profession, I thought that was an extraordinary question to be asked. I think if I'd have said he was a lecturer over in UCD in law, he'd have fell off the chair with a fright. If I'd have said he was a bin man, he would have said, "Okay, well they're idiots; they won't find out." So I kind of clicked onto something there, and then I started making very devious phone calls into the Department of Health, asking was there a possibility. So I found out there was a possibility, and then I went public. When you went public, what happened? When I went public, then uh, loads of people start to write me, as in over 290-something people. And uh, we submitted it into the Department of Health. It's all in the book. Uh, I wanted to put my own person in. They reneged on that. In other words, they moved the goalposts. They wanted it always their way. They're very, very arrogant. And uh, so I advised people not to do it because to me it wouldn't, we wouldn't have got a fair hearing. I want that done again for these people because these people are still out there. I want nothing from this state. I have nothing but total contempt for it. Um, but what I do want is for them to contact the drug company and tell me if finally how they destroyed my child. Um, the book, by the way, of just joining is Justice for My Son. Uh, Vera Duffy um, is the author. Vera is the mother of Alan. Um, as you went on, you had these two things going on in your life. You had this battle against the state and, and, yeah. and the hospital, um, trying to get recognition that something had happened yeah. and an acceptance. And you also had um, Alan at home. Was he at home with you? He all was the at time? home till he was almost 13 years of age, till I couldn't lift him anymore. That was when he broke my nose trying to get him up the stairs. And I was pouring blood. And I did say also uh, that I intended to take his life. People said to did me, you, you know what? Well, oh, I did. Th- that was because my he had no quality of life. He had no quality of life. And That's if you love your child as much as I loved him, I knew what was facing him when he left my care. And it would never be to what I wanted. And I was saving enough ta- to tablets to take him out. Someone said to me, what about the legal complications of that? I said, we should have stated already destroyed him. I was switching off his light. But the decision was taken from me because his dad took him from me when I wasn't there. And he was put in St. Michael's, which I hated. Your dad, sorry, his dad, his dad your, your yeah. husband, that? Yes, yeah, yeah. Against your wishes? Uh, was it, well, he, he knew he was killing me and uh, he, I, I couldn't do it because I wouldn't let people help. I, I mean, I, I wanted to take care of him. And it was the lifting now because he's doubly incontinent. He can't do anything. He, his head is going from side to side. It's, it's, it's a battle to feed him. It's a battle to do everything with him. And so he's growing now into a 12 and a half, 13 year old. And his dad is about six foot two. So he would have been a beautiful, tall young man. Yeah. And so it, it simply physically wasn't, I wasn't, I'm only a small little woman, five foot one of me. I may have a big mouth, but I mean, I didn't have the strength to take care of him until he was 22, when he, did, when he was, he was gone. You can understand where your husband was coming from. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I he, think that was the decision you He had find. to do it. Yeah, he had to do it. And at one stage, I was pregnant on one of the children and he was convulsing continuously in the bedroom. And Kevin put him downstairs because I would jump out of the bed and I'd stand looking at him and I couldn't bring him out of it. It's a horrible thing to look at. It's like someone sticking a knife in you and twisting it. It's your child. And so Kevin said, I'm putting him downstairs. Very if he dies, it doesn't matter. But I can't let you keep looking at him because you can't bring him out of it. Very harsh things to hear and very harsh things to, to be around. No mother could you. imagine what that would do to you. They just simply could not imagine. And it's, the, it's the, the way you're treated here. If it goes wrong in this country on you, they will do exactly to you what they did to me. And that is, they, they break your spirit. They continuously lie they cover up. They say, prove it in a court of law. Now, to most people, that's a daunting experience. How am I going to do that? You'll be threatened. You're going to lose the roof over your head. You've already had a mm-hmm. hatchet put through your family. So prove it. They're not going to give you free legal aid to fight them, are they? So you're going to end up in a high court, probably eventually into a Supreme Court. If you lose, you lose everything. Your child is destroyed. Your life is destroyed. And now you're losing everything. So you get those kind of threats thrown at you, which to me is totally disgusting. How were you paying for all that? Well, I could afford it. 
I mean, at the time when we went, I'd love you to talk about the coroner's court. I will. Uh, we we went. The, we, I went when he did die. He, we went to the coroner's court, and I had two photographs. And I said to him, to Brian Farrell, can you tell me what happened to this child? Because certainly nobody out there can tell me. Mm. And I wanted an inquest. And I showed. What, two, what were the two photographs? One of them before it happened, and well, one, one after. That. And one I've one here. Yeah, for, the, the for those horrible of you one joining, there. Uh, now the one on, on the, the back. Of, the one on the back of the book, Tom. He's yeah. only he's only sixteen years of age in that. He's for those. He's he looks. He's very skinny. He's wearing. Yeah, well, those five and, more years of waste went on him, and, and the picture was. He was body was so bad that I couldn't bear to, to pictures to take a photograph of it. It was just so bad. Oh, his limbs fell out of their sockets, for God's sake. There was nothing, nothing, skin and bone was left of him. I mean, a Supreme Court judge turned around and said, why couldn't they save me to only pneumonia? And I went, oh dear God almighty. Do you know anything? Do they know anything, yeah. Um, God, to see that happening to your child, I can't imagine anything uh, more horrific. Um, as you brought those photographs to the coroner's court, what were they saying to you? Uh, he said I would need a doctor to, um, you know, re- request an inquest. And so I said, OK. So my daughters and I went to see the man who admitted him into the Matter Hospital. And so he wrote to the coroner and because I explained to him what I believed had happened to him and he went, to the, he wrote to the coroner who asked for the inquest. Now, an interesting thing happened in the Matter Hospital and I think I've already said this, uh, it was said to me, that's the worst case of cerebral palsy I've ever seen. And this was a doctor. And I said, that is not cerebral palsy. That was done by a vaccine. And instantly it was, the wall goes down, whoomp. Who told you that? If I'd have pointed to somebody in a white coat, I forget it, they're struck off. Mm. And uh, I said, I'm not about to discuss it with you. My child is dying. And uh, his dad was sitting in the corridor another day when he was in intensive care and they were having a chat about him. And uh, three or four of them talking about that's the worst case of vaccine damage I've ever seen. So Kevin just sat there and let them waffle away. What's they called? Vaccine damage I've ever seen. And his dad is sitting there listening to all this. So he's letting them waffle away. And so eventually, anyway, he says, uh, well, I've heard all that. Right. At least, and, and they're saying, well, it is very bad. It's global. That means every every part of them is gone. Yeah. Every faculty is gone. So they're talking about it amongst themselves as mm. vaccine damage. Mm. But for you to get them to say that publicly, it's no. never going to never. happen. No, it's never going to happen. When it happened, I went to the, the man who delivered them. And he said, Vera, and you will never see vaccine damage written on hospital paper or will it ever go on a death certificate. He said they protect it like an iron fist. But it has gone on death certificates in England and it has gone on death I have never seen it on a death certificate. Right. But they have, what well, you were saying... What they the, have done is they have, they have accepted it. They have accepted it and they've paid out dutifully to the, these poor unfortunate people. But I have never yet seen it written on a death certificate. And that was the big fight at the coroner's court. They would not allow it to be written on the death certificate. Um, it's incredible. So at the, at the current state of play with this, yeah. legally, is, it, is there still matters outstanding? Are you still hopeful that you can, you can get? Well, you see, I mean, I could take it to court for wrongful debt, but why would I do that? Why would I make lawyers give them more money? Mm. You know, there's things I want, and what I want is, for the, at this stage of my life, please tell me, one way or the other, what destroyed them. So, the second thing I want is all the people who are out there who have nothing and they're terrified of where their children are going to end up and please God they'll get on the phone and ring in and talk to you and yeah. I know they're yeah, all do, out please. there please uh, 1894 53106 they're all uh, out is there is the number or 53106 on that um, and the third thing I want they have this uh, they have this system like a safety net in, in the United States a tax goes on every shot and if something happens there's no adverse publicity so we don't have the doctors diving under their desks out of the way mm. and we don't have a cover up and uh, so this pool of money then goes into banks and then apparently people look at these children and it's still happening today and they're awarded accordingly. So to me, that's a civilised way of yeah. all, with the problem because we need vaccination. Absolutely. And but stop re- what they're doing here. All vaccinations carry a small risk. A small risk, with of them. course they do. Um, but you're saying other people have been affected. Do you think was your son at the extreme end? I of- think he's the worst I've ever seen. There were some as bad, but I think he might be the worst I'd ever seen. Um, it's, it's a very hard read. It's, it's you a know, very, very hard you read. You I mean, the word destruction in it, and that's exactly what happens. It, it, it's total destruction. I would have preferred had they killed him. I would have no doubt about saying I would have preferred he died. 
if you were to ask me, you know, if he'd died of whooping cough, I don't believe a child can die of whooping cough. The Department of Health say they will. They're probably at this present moment now starting to put in notes in papers, whooping cough is coming back. They do this to get people into a panic to run and get them. So I would say I w- if you were to ask me a question, I would rather my son had died because I read his files. And I know what he went through. He suffered. When, when he was taken from me. I, and I couldn't repeat it on air. No, what they had to do with him. It's, it's an appalling tale. Really, it's an appalling tale, yeah. Appalling. And, uh, and it's an appalling country to live in. We do, I'm we actually, I'm, at the moment, I've written to Rue, Alan Shatter, as Justice, uh, Minister for Justice. I'm very curious to see what he's going to do about it. I mean, it's not a pretty letter. No. But it, it's, on, it's on its way to him with that book. We'll see what happens. We'll Vera, see what happens. Thank you very much for joining us it's today. been a pleasure, Tom. Uh, Vera Duffy there. Justice for my son. Um, I'd like to uh, give a website. I know there's you, a lot of people. You were mentioning people. an email address. Yeah, my email touch. address is justice for my son. Yeah. 22 at gmail.com. So it's justice for, for my, my son. son 22, 22 at gmail.com. At gmail.com. The 22 is the year, the year he died, the age he died. The age he died. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Vera, thank you very much for joining okay, us Okay, thanks morning. for having me, Tom. Alan Duffy died on New Year's Eve. His heartbroken parents, Kevin and Vera, said their legal battle with the Eastern Health Board has died with him. After the funeral mass this morning in St. Anthony's Church in Clontarf, Mrs. Vera Duffy had one more thing to do before wrapping her lengthy crusade on behalf of her son. Struggling with her grief, she leaned on her husband for support as she rerouted the funeral cortege to stop at the Department of Health and hand in a letter of protest for the attention of Health Minister Michael Noonan. Vera Duffy founded the Association for Vaccine Damaged Children after her son suffered massive brain damage when he was nine months old. She says this was a direct result of the three-in-one vaccine he received. She then began her campaign to draw attention to the plight of other families whose situation, she says, has never been acknowledged by the department. My child is, is dead as a result of something they promoted and there is no other explanation, just that they did kill him. Why are you so convinced that the three-in-one vaccine caused Alan's brain damage? And the three-in-one vaccine has been causing damage all over the world for many years. In this department here, I've done absolutely nothing to help me. It is, it is not civil, as far as I'm concerned. It wouldn't happen in a civilised society, what they have done. A spokesperson for the Department of Health said the cause of Alan Duffy's brain damage had not been established and that the matter was still subject to legal proceedings. However, the department said it had cooperated fully with Alan's parents in providing all the relevant medical records to the family and their solicitors. I want an absolute apology and it, it, it misses and I want to be vindicated. I want to made known that this destroyed my son. Vera and Kevin Duffy said their anger and grief was compounded six weeks ago when they received a letter from the Eastern Health Board regretting that all files relating to Alan had been destroyed in a fire in 1989.